Hi everyone, let's continue learning unit 6, analytical separation technique with the next uh, technique which is thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography is a solid liquid technique of separation. Uh, we have two phases which are the solid as the stationary phase and the liquid as the mobile phase. We have learned in our previous lecture uh, what is the meaning of stationary phase and what is the meaning of mobile phase, right? So in TLC analysis, solid uh, most commonly used in uh, TLC analysis are silica gel and alumina. So both of these adsorbents are polar. So we have known that uh, from our previous lecture, the stationary phase is um, most of the time uh, polar in nature. Right, and uh, silica is also acidic, so alumina is available in neutral, basic, and acidic form. The different components in the mixture move up the plate at different rates due to the difference in their partitioning behavior uh, between the mobile liquid phase and the stationary phase, and in TLC separation technique as well we use the capillary action uh, theory okay and principles uh, for the uh, mobile liquid phase to move up the stationary phase remember previously we have discussed about paper chromatography uh, whereby the mobile liquid phase move up uh, the stationary phase for tlc it is using the same capillary action concept the separated spots are visualized with ultraviolet light or by placing the plate in iodine vapor. So this is how uh, the structure of silica looks like for the stationary phase of a TLC, a thin layer chromatography. <clears throat> and the, uh, this is for alumina. So alumina is available uh, in acidic, neutral and basic condition. There are three uses or more uh, of a TLC. Uh, you use TLC to determine how many components there are in a mixture. Uh, so you can determine whether the components that you are analyzing is pure or not. The second use is the second use is to determine the best solvent conditions for separation on a column. And the third use of TLC is to monitor the composition of fractions collected from column chromatography. Thin layer chromatography has some advantages. It is sensitive, fast, simple and inexpensive analytical technique. And it is a micro technique, meaning to say that you can use very little sample as little as uh, 10 to the power of negative 9 gram of material can be detected, although the sample size is from 1 to 100 times 10 to the power of negative 6 gram. So we use only a little bit of sample to determine uh, the basic, uh, you know, uh, the basic, uh, the basic level of determination of purity of your samples. So this is how the LC plate look like. Um, it is a planar surface. So of course, uh, for the LC plate, you will also have uh, the starting line and the finishing line. The starting line is whereby you dot your uh, ink or your samples. And the starting line should be above the mobile face. Uh, solution so this is uh, how you run the tlc plate in a solvent you put it in the beaker with a lid uh, to cover the beaker so that your sample will not evaporate so from this uh, photo you can see a tlc of a black ink a black ink contains many other colors 
to form the black ink. How do you visualize your results from TLC analysis? There are various techniques to visualize the compounds. First, using the sulfuric acid or heat. So this is a destructive method uh, because it leaves charred blots behind the TLC plate. Okay. And second method is using iodine. Uh, this is semi-destructive method because iodine absorbs onto the spots but it is not permanent okay and number three uh, using uv light uv light is a non-destructive method uh, long wavelength uh, will result in the background uh, color green and the spot will be dark and the short wavelength will uh, result in the plate dark and the compounds glow When we talk about thin layer chromatography, we always talk about retention factor or RF. Retention factor or RF is a distance uh, spot traveled from the origin or the starting line divided by the distance of solvent front. If you look at the diagram here, the distance of uh, solvent front is the distance of uh, sorry uh, rf just now is the distance spot travel from origin line uh, divided by the distance of solvent front so distance of solvent front is the distance between the origin line and the solvent front line or the finishing line okay so this is distance of solvent front and distance travel by spot is the distance between the origin line or the starting line until uh, the end of the um, spot travel, uh, the spot is detected. Okay, so for the spot itself, we will take the middle, uh, middle of the spot to be measured. Okay, from the starting line. For the starting line as well, you take the middle dot of the uh, sample on the starting line to the middle dots of the sample uh, end travel. Okay. Let's say we have this example here. You start with the dot in the middle of the sample and the dot in the middle of sample at the end of the travel okay same with here same with here and same with here right so this is again the distance of the solvent front eh? right the rf depends on the following parameters which is the solvent system the adsorbent Adsorbent grain size, adsorbent thickness, and amount of material spotted. So what is uh, the adsorbent, adsorbent here? Adsorbent here is the stationary phase, whether you are using alumina or silica gel just now. Ideally, the RF value is should be between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. So you adjust the RF with solvent uh, polarity. RF will increase with increasing polarity okay so you have more polar solvent the rf will increase so if you have uh, two component mixture in a thin layer chromatography you will have let's say component a and component b Okay, let's say you have two components here, component A and component B of a mixture. So on the origin line, you can see them as one dot only. This is your sample on the origin line. But somehow when uh, the, uh, the solvent has moved up, okay, your mobile phase has moved up, 
you can see that the compound or your mixture separated into two com components, which is component A and component B. So the one which travel the furthest okay, is the less polar compound. And the one which travel uh, the most slower, the slower one is uh, the more polar compound, okay? All right. So in this case, component A is more polar and component B is less polar. How do you calculate the RF? You calculate the RF just now by measuring the distance between the solvent front in the origin. Okay, divided, uh, sorry, uh, and also you, uh, you measure the distance traveled by the spot. Okay, so let's say the distance traveled by the spot is A and the distance uh, for the solvent front is B. So RF is A divided by B. Let's take a look at the example here. If you look at spot number one, distance travel by the spot is 1.4 centimeter and distance for the solvent front is 7.7 .7 centimeter so rf would be 1.4 divided by 7.7 .7, you get 0 0.18 as the rf so you just replicate this calculation for spot number two and spot number three uh, to see if you get the same answer with the example here So question uh, here, which samples plotted on the TLC plate below composed of more than one substances? So let's say you have compound one, sample one, sample two, and sample three. Okay, for sample one, do you think it has more than one substance? What about compound two? Compound two? And compound three. If you look at compound three here, it has three different dots with the three different colors. Compound one, it has the same color but two dots. In compound two, it has only one color. So sample one and sample three were composed of more than one substance. Okay, as because during the TLC experiment two or more spots are separated from the original sample. So as long as you have more than one spots uh, for your sample um, at different uh, location, okay, it's very distinct different location, so you can uh, know that this sample contains more than one substance. So sample two, even though you look at the TLC plate, there is only one uh, dot, okay, one sample separation, but it is not necessarily meaning that this contain only one substance. It does not mean that, it does not necessarily means that sample two contain more than, uh, sorry, uh, only one substance, okay. It may have been composed of more than one substance, but if it uh, is was, but if it was, the substance did not separate during the experiment. Maybe uh, if you put a, light, uh, a longer uh, TLC plate, you will see the separation because uh, it requires a more distance travel to see the separation between the substance. Okay, but... Um, it does not always mean that it has more than one substance. Sometimes it is just one substance, okay? So it may be have one more than one, maybe have one only substance for sample two, okay? It depends. All right, now we move to column chromatography. So in column chromatography, the stationary phase is a solid adsorbent place in a vertical glass uh, which is usually uh, 
uh, a uh, vertical glass. Uh, we call it a column. Okay. The mobile face is a liquid added to the top and flows down through the column by either gravity or external pressure. Okay. And then column chromatography is generally used as a purification technique. It isolates desired compounds from a mixture. So this is the photo of a packed column um, representing a column chromatography. Right? So you have to make sure that the column is perfectly vertical and it, it contains stationary phase. In this photo, the stationary phase or the solid adsorbent is the silica gel. And um, at the end of the uh, column, before the outlet of the column, uh, you have to have a small plug of glass wood um, so that your silica gel will not uh, be clogged inside the uh, outlet of the column. Okay, so this is a schematic diagram for column chromatography. Uh, this is your column containing the stationary phase. It could be, uh, sorry, normally it's silica gel. Okay, and if you look at the end of your uh, column, we have glass wool here just to retain your silica gel in place. And then uh, the second step is for you to load uh, your sample. Let's say the black colored here is your sample. And then uh, after you load your sample, it will uh, separate into different components based on the polarity of the uh, component. So the most polar component will be eluted last. The the less polar or the non-polar component will be eluted first. Okay, so obviously in this uh, diagram, the red colored component is uh, the less polar, the non-polar one, and the blue one, the blue colored component is the most polar components of the sample. The mixture to be analyzed by column chromatography is applied to the top of the column and the stationary phase is held in a narrow tube and the mobile phase is forced through the tube under pressure or gravity. Uh, an equilibrium is established between the solute adsorb on the adsorbent and the eluting solvent flowing through the column. Because the different components in the mixture have different interaction with the stationary and mobile phase, okay, they will be carried along with the mobile phase to varying degrees and separation will be achieved. As has been mentioned just now, you have the red colored, green colored and blue colored components of the mixture. They separate because they have different uh, migration rate. They, they have different polarity and so on. Okay. The individual components or elements are collected at, as, the, as the solvent drips from the bottom of the column. This is also has been shown in the schematic diagram just now. Um, for column chromatography, silica gel and alumina are commonly used as adsorbent and they are sold in different mesh size. For example, silica gel 60 or silica gel 230 uh, to 400. This number refers to the mesh of the sieve used to size the silica. Adsorbent particle size affects how the solvent flows, flows uh, through the column. Okay, if you have more pack uh, and uh, a more, uh, you know, uh, a smaller particle size, you might have a different flows of the uh, mobile phase compared to if you have larger particle size. The polarity of the solvent which is passed through the column affects the relative rates at which compounds uh, move through the column. Uh, this is uh, what you have known. This is the basic of uh, chromatography. The most polar one will be uh, left behind and uh, move more slowly compared to the non-polar. 
Okay, often a series of increasingly polar solvent system are used to elude a column. A non-polar solvent is first uh, used to elude a less polar compound. Okay, so in this case, they use a non-polar solvent to elude a less polar compound. Once the less polar compound is off the column, a more polar solvent is added to the column to elude the more polar compound. So this is a step where you can do uh, to, um, to elude all the less polar compounds first and then after that only you use polar solvent to elude more polar compound. The stationary phase of a, uh, of a column chromatography is very polar. Polar compounds are going to be attracted to the polar column packing by hydrogen bonding or dipodopper attraction. So polar compounds are going to move very slowly. This is just a revision to what we have discussed just now. And then polar compounds are going to come off the column first while the polar compounds are going to come off the column very last. Usually, one starts with less polar solvent to remove the less polar compound, then slowly increase the polarity of the solvent to remove the more polar compound. So this is how you do it with column chromatography. So these are the expected elution order of organic classes. If you look at the list here, uh, alkanes uh, has less uh, polarity uh, compared to other, comp other compounds on the list, other... Uh, Solvents on the list, alkenes, uh, followed by alkenes, ester, ethers, and so on. And uh, carboxylic acid in the list has the most, uh, is the most polar, and it will move more slowly. Okay. So this is the rank for eluting power of organic solvent. Uh, if you have more polar uh, eluting, sorry, uh, organic solvent, it it is more powerful eluters. Okay, uh, so from this uh, list here, you know that alkenes, uh, they are uh, less polar compared to the one at the bottom of the list, which is acetic acid. Uh, this is more polar and more powerful eluters. Yeah. All right, we have discussed um, three types of uh, chromatography technique, chromatography separation technique. First is the paper chromatography, second thin layer chromatography, and third column chromatography. So we know that in those three system, the stationary phase is always polar. Okay, but there is also a condition whereby you have a stationary phase which is non-polar. The stationary phase uh, with non-polar column packing is called reverse phase column chromatography. Okay, it's, it's not the normal column chromatography, but we call it as a reverse phase column chromatography. In this case, the stationary phase is non-polar. So you know what happened when the stationary phase is non-polar? It will cause the non-polar compounds to move slowly and the polar compound will move more quickly. Why? Because the non-polar compounds will move slowly because they are attracted to the non-polar column packing. And the more polar components, they will move up uh, quickly down the column because uh, they are not attracted to the uh, non-polar column packing. So polar solvents such as water and methanol are used in reverse phase chromatography. And uh, this concept of reverse phase column chromatography is applicable in uh, HPLC. Okay, high performance liquid chromatography. This is an instrument uh, for separation of uh, in, uh, compounds as well. Okay, so basically that's the end of learning unit six. 
I hope uh, everyone uh, have grabbed the concept of analytical separation. We have uh, mechanical separation. We have solvent uh, extraction. We have chromatographic separation. So from this, uh, there are three most uh, common things that you need to know from this learning unit. First is how to calculate the uh, separation, sorry, uh, the extraction. Okay, how, how to calculate your, your extraction, your solvent extraction, right? And then second, uh, how to calculate things related to thin layer chromatography or paper chromatography, which, uh, which involves the calculation of RF. And also, of course, you have to know the basic principles and applications of all the um, analytical separation technique that we have discussed in this learning unit. Then thank you very much for listening to this lecture.